Everyone, I'm Victor, a PhD student at the University of Amsterdam, and I will present a work I did in collaboration with Emil Hugeboom, Fabian Fuchs, Ingmar Posner, and Max Walling. Equal contribution with Emil. The work is called EN Equivariant Normalizing Flows. In this work, we present a generative model for point cloud data equivalent to Euclidean transformations with one of its main applica applications in molecule generation. First, I would like to introduce some motivation in why molecule generation can be important. Generating new drugs is a slow and expensive process, since most of the drug candidates do not pass the first tests in their development process. Generating better quality candidates may accelerate the drug discovery process, making it much cheaper and efficient. Deep generative models can play an important role in the generation of better molecule candidates, accelerating the whole process. Before introducing our method, I will briefly introduce the concept of equivariance. We say a function is equivalent to a transformation if transforming its input results in an equivalent transformation of its output. A well-known example will be translation equivariance in convolutional neural networks. In other words, translating the input image and then running a CNN on it leads to the same results as first running the CNN on it and then translating the output. This is a strong inductive bias that makes convolutional neural networks very data efficient because learning from a single example implies generalization to all its possible translation. Another successful example will be permutation equivariance in graph neural networks. Given the graph from the image, we can represent it as an array of node features and its respective adjacency matrix. The order in which the nodes are indexed is arbitrary and doesn't modify the graph structure. Therefore, if we permute the indexes of the nodes, we are still representing the same graph. This is why graph neural networks are built to be equivalent to permutations, such that learning on a single arbitrary order of indexes implies generalization to all its permutations. Lately, a new type of equivariant has gained a lot of attention. This is equivariant to Euclidean transformations commonly in a three-dimensional space. For example, rotating or translating any of these two objects doesn't change their identity. Therefore, we may want to remain invariant to Euclidean transformations when classifying them. Or if we apply a nonlinear function to them, for example, a neural network, we may want it to be equivariant to Euclidean transformations such that learning the function in a single position and orientation implies generalization to all possible translations and rotations of the same molecule. We can define these point clouds uh, or molecules as a set of node coordinates x and node features h. Under this notation, different translation and rotation equivariant networks have been lately proposed. In this, in this project, we choose to use the EN equivariant graph neural network to build our generative model because of its efficiency and cheap computation. Now I will introduce the proposed method. Using the mentioned EN equivariant graph neural network, or EGNN, we will define our generative model as a normalizing flow. Given an invertible function f that maps a sample xh from a complex distribution to a sample z from a non-distribution, we can define the likelihood of a point xh as the product between the likelihood of z and the determinant of the Jacobian of f. And then we can train our model by optimizing the likelihood of the dataset in the log space. We design pz to be invariant to Euclidean transformations, and the function f to be equivariant by using the mentioned EGNN, such that the estimated likelihood of each molecule will be invariant to its position and orientation. But as we mentioned, the function f has to be invertible, and the EN equivariant graph neural network that we use to build this function is not invertible by definition. Therefore, we choose to approximate its inverse by using ordinary differential equations. 
we define f as a differential equation integrated over a conceptual time variable t using a differential phi predicted by the EGNN with the only constraint of the EGNN having to be differential, which it is. In other words, the output space z is approximated as the sum of infinitesimal steps from the input xh to the output z shown in this diagram. These infinitesimal steps are predicted by phi, which we approximate with an equivariant network. In order to compute the inverse of this function, we can just subtract these infinitesimal steps the other way around, starting from z until xh. Additionally, the log determinant of the Jacobian of this ODE function can be computed by integrating the trace of the Jacobian of phi. The normalizing flow defined by this ODE function then works as follows. First, we sample a point xh from the dataset. We forward it through the ODE function, which outputs the z values and the log determinant of the Jacobian. Finally, we obtain the log likelihood of z from a predefined probability distribution, for example, a Gaussian distribution. And then finally, we obtain the likelihood of the data pxh from these terms. Additionally, some of the node features h are discrete, for example, the atom types. The, the atom types. But normalizing flows require a continuous and differentiable variables. Therefore, we have to dequantize them before the ODE function. For this, we include an intermediate step where we dequantize the node features in the inference path, mapping them to a continuous space. And we map them back to discrete space in the generative path. Notice this adds an additional term such that we optimize a lower bound on P of x h. Finally, to generate samples, we run the pipeline the other way around. We first sample z from a noise distribution and we pass it through the inverse of the function f. Then we map the h values to this grid and we obtain the generated molecule. In this image, we provide a visualization of how the molecule is gradually generated through the normalizing flow given a noisy sam sample z. Following, we present an animation of the, of the generation and inference processes for a single example. First, we sample random coordinates and features from a noise distribution. Then, we generate a molecule from it, and if we rotate it to a different orientation, and then we do inference back to the original noise, we get back the firstly sampled noise distribution in a different orientation. In the performed experiments, we compare our method to non-equivariant variations of our model with, with and without data augmentation, where data augmentation means translating and rotating the training samples. And we also compare to previous EN equivariant flows, which only worked for positional data X, but not with feature information H. In the first experiment, we report the estimated test negative log likelihoods in relatively simple data set sampled from energy functions where E and symmetries are present. Those data sets are DW4 and LJ13. We see that our method outperforms its non-equivariant variants and also previous equivariant methods for this positional data set. Additionally, we also analyze the negative log likelihood in a subset of QM9 where only positional data X is considered. Again, we see that in terms of log likelihood, our method significantly outperforms its non-equivariant baselines and previous equivariant flow methods. Finally, we analyze the performance of our equivariant flow when molecules and when molecules when generating molecules directly in its 3D space. We consider an atom is stable when the number of bonds with other atoms matches their balance. We consider a molecule is stable when all its atoms are stable. Notice the stability measure is very sensitive to small variations. This is because of a very small shift in an atom position can make the whole molecule unstable. As we see, our equivariant normalizing uh, flow performs better than its non-equivariant variants in terms of negative log likelihood, 
um, an atom and molecule stability. In the reported image, image we plot some generated molecules uh, by our model. In the first row, they are randomly sampled, while in the second row, we filtered uh, stable molecules from, from the randomly sampled. Finally, I want to mention some of the limitations of our method that can be improved in the future. Um, ODE flows are very slow since the network has to run sequentially multi multiple times during training. This could be accelerated with alternative generative methods. Uh, also another limitation is that the probability distribution of molecules is highly skewed, which exhibits some instabilities in the training loss. And finally, maybe more of a positive thought for the future work is that uh, I believe that subsequent improvements in this type of generative methods may bring uh, significant advances in the field of drug discovery. Thank you for your attention.